Hello everyone and welcome to the Sochi 2014 Winter Paralympic Games. It's day six of competition here at the Rosa Kuta Alpine Centre and it's men's slalom day. There are three categories being raced today, visually impaired standing and sitting. And as always in slalom, there are two runs. First one just now and then the second one a little later on. And at the moment, just some forerunners going down the course. We're not missing anything. Now, as always, the categories that you saw there are based on the athletes' functional abilities. And you will see athletes with different impairments competing against each other in the same class. And this is made possible by a results calculation system based on a mathematical formula, which was instigated by the athletes many years ago and after 24 hours of snow the weather has cleared it's bright it's sunny but as you can see the snow temperature is above freezing and uh, it's making life very difficult for the peace workers who have done a great job to get this piece ready for run one and we start with the visually impaired category it is making their way down to the start that looks like a forerunner with that bib c on now the calculation system i was talking about uh, gives each class within a category a factor and this is applied to the individual's time and it gives a level playing field and it's important to point out that the time that you will see on your screens throughout this uh, slalom competition will be the factored or calculated time with the time stands and the winner will be decided straight away now here is the start list for the men's slalom in the visual impaired category chris williamson gets us underway but the defending winter paralympic champion is uh, number four uh, jakob krako who won the super g here on day two of competition in the alpine 17 athletes in total with their guides and there are three classes in this category b1 b2 and b3 and we have athletes in all classes skiing so we'll take you through what those classes are as and when the athletes ski touches being made to the top of the piece the french team Touches. Russia. <laughs> so conditions almost perfect. The snow though, just a little bit wet and it, it will cut up, it will rut up and we will see some big holes appearing in the piece at some stage. Lights are on. The clouds are staying away and we're ready to go. Here is the profile, 54 gates set by Utaka. Kirikubu of Japan and a reversible drop of 180 meters. A real test this will be. The top section there, very steep. Then this flatter section at the bottom of the screen before the final pitch, which again is very testing for all the athletes. We'll turn at red and blue gates. If you miss one. And you are disqualified unless you climb back up and go through the gate. You've got to get your boots above the line of the gate. The men's slalom for the visually impaired category is about to get underway. And Chris Williamson of Canada and his guide Nick Brush will be the first to get us underway. Now... Williamson lost his guide just a week before the event and the reason was that his guide decided to go and ski with Matt Marcou, uh, also of Canada, because Marcou's brother, who was usually his guide, was injured. So Robin Femi jumped ship and uh, Williamson and Brush have not been working together long. What can they do here? Williamson was sick in Vancouver but was a gold medalist 
in Salt Lake in 02. 29.51, the first tie split. We get one tie split in this run, and they're absolutely motoring down the piece here. Williamson with the best of the conditions, and he's making the most of it. He's got a beautiful rhythm going. Difficult combination against there, but a really good ski from Chris Williamson. Very tidy, or it appears to be a very good time. We'll wait and see. The B3 class describes the least severe vision impairment eligible for alpine skiing. Uh, Maciek Kresel of Poland with his guide, Anna Orgazinska, also fit into this class. Kresel, the flag bearer at the opening ceremony. His uh, best results come in giant slalom and slalom. Now the guide can only go no more than two gates in front. So she can be two gates in front in Bogazinska's uh, case. If she goes more than that, then uh, they will be disqualified. The, the guy, Orgazinska, setting a good pace, and Kresel, well, he's already a second outside the tie of Williamson. And to me, Williamson was skiing this bottom pitch incredibly quickly. He was carving his turns here. Kresel is just slipping his turns a little bit. And uh, that will not be as quick as Williamson. The idea is to stay as high in the line as possible, beat the gates out of the way. And you can see that Kresel is not as quick as Williamson, and in fact, he's 3.5 seconds off the pace. So Williamson has set a very competitive time, it would seem, but we'll find out soon enough because Jakub Kraka of Slovakia will be out shortly. But before him, it's Miroslav Haros, also of Slovakia, with Marcus Hudik, his guide. And uh, Haros, second in the downhill, couple of mistakes in Super G. And in the slalom leg of the super combined uh, costume, DNF both of those after his good start with the silver. Fourth in the slalom in Vancouver, second at the World Championships in La Molina last year. He's getting close to the top set of the step of the podium, but uh, can he get there? And well, he's just got a little late in the line there, but he's a second quicker at the interval than Williamson. But Williamson was really quick through here. And Harris, who's skiing in the B2 class, the class profile includes athletes that are unable to recognise a capital E that is 15 centimetres by 15 centimetres in size and a distance of 4 metres. But 50.18, well, he's just outside. He's lost a fair bit of time between the uh, interval and the finish. He's lost almost 1.4 seconds. Now, this is Jakob Krakow, the defending Winter Paralympic Slalom champion. He won the Super G. Can he add another medal to his haul here? His guide is Martin Motika. And Williamson's time, 29.51. Not the quickest we've seen at the split, but Williamson is the quickest at the bottom, and Krakow point. 3-9 in front, but let's see how he skis these. Well, he's wide in the line, and Williamson, again, to me, looked quicker through these turns. But how will Krakow ski this bottom section? The fastest skiers from the first run go in reverse order in run two. And 50.18. Oh, they're dead level. Dead level. Good skiing from... Uh, Krakow, and now it is Gabriel Juan Doste Ipe and his guy Josep Anu Ferrer Ventura. Yeah. Doste Ipe being in the B2 class, like uh, Krakow and Hanaus before. Had a really good slalom leg. And he's super combined and we'll be hoping to repeat something similar here but he's getting a little late in the line he's slipping those turns he needs to try and carve it in oh good late adjustment just uh, almost six tenths off the pace as well and into his final pitch 
his guide just keeping an eye on him making sure he's not too far in front good turn through that vertical section just a little late in the line and he's just shy of two seconds off the pace he goes uh, fourth for the time being now michael beledic of slovakia with philip motica and the brother of uh, martin who is that of krakow's guy and uh, beledic in the b2 class like his two compatriots had us in Krakow before. And the opening turns are good, but again, you can just see there sliding down the hill a little bit. He needs to try and carve them as much as possible. Keep the uh, skis pointing down the fall line as much as possible. 29.12. Well, he's quite a way off the pace. He's almost over two, over three seconds. 4.34 seconds off the pace. And you can see he's a little bit more tentative than the other skiers before him. If he makes it to the bottom, he's going to have to go on a second run charge. Baladic. Into the final few turns. And finishes in a time at 6.67 off the pace. Now for Russia, Valery. Red Kuzabov and his guide Evgeny Jedalev. Red Kuzabov won the last four slaloms on the World Cup tour coming into these games. Two in Copper Mountain in January of this year, two in Sam Moritz in February. Bronze medal in Lamalina in the slalom. Had a really good slalom leg of the Super Combined. Now, what can he do here? Well, he's uh, got some good turns at the top. Look at him go. He's skiing a brilliant line. Now, look how more direct in the full light Reb Kuzov is. And as a result, like Williamson looks really quick on these turns. Great skiing from Red Kuzovov. 50.18. That could be under threat here. Red Kuzovov leads by nearly half a second. Brilliant skiing from the Russian. World number one in slalom, and he leads here in Sochi. Now his compatriot, even Francev, the world champion in slalom. His sister Alexandra has a uh, full set of medals from the Sochi Games. It's gold, silver and bronze. She won gold in the uh, visually impaired slalom. And her brother gets the first Winter Paralympic medal of his own here. Ninth in downhill, fifth in Super G. He's at 2.9 seconds off the pace, and half a second separates the top three. In fact, two thirds of a second separate the top four. And to get a fit, he's got to be within a second to have a chance in the second run, unless there's a number of falls. But to, well, Kuzubov's time, 49.69, won't be beaten by Francev. And Francev gets to the bottom, 5.5 seconds off the pace, goes seventh. Hi, Matic Klesel. All these skiers, including Mark Batham in the B2 class. It's Batham and Cade Yamamoto out of the start hat next. Batham with a silver medal from the Super G's more of a speed man than a technical man, and you can see it in his opening turns. Not as fluent as uh, with Kuzabov or Williamson or Krakow before. With Kuzabov's time, 28.79. Won't be better by Basin. And Dayton just telling Yamamoto to uh, speed up a little bit. 2.39. 11th in Vancouver in the slalom. And Dayton improve on that. Red 
for Zabov's time, 49.69. And Faithen won't do that, but where will he come? Just slides that turn three from home. Sick, 3.59 off the face. Gets himself between Gorte Ypres and Kresel. Jon Santacana and his guide, Miguel Galindo Gatel of Spain. Santacana won the second slalom of the season in the Coronet Park, New Zealand. He's a silver medalist from the slalom in Vancouver, second in the world in 2011. And when he returned from injury back in December, January time, and, uh, he's been skiing very well. 1.61 off the pace. And Takana needs to let the skis flow, and he's almost catching up with his guide. He's very close to him. Now, Galindo, his guide, opens it up a little bit, and it's, uh, difficult turns on those verticale. Three from home. And Santa Cana goes 6, 3.52 off the pace, just in front of Bateman. Mac Marcou and Robin Femi of Canada now. His first Paralympic Winter Games. And he's got two bronze medals already in downhill and slalom. Uh, giant, super giant slalom, excuse me. Femi shouting all the instructions. Now McCoo, two seconds off the pace at the Split time, get some rhythm going down this final pitch. And tucks for the line, 2.34 fifth. So the top four, second and a bit in front of the rest of the field. Now they're coming thick and fast. This is Radomir Dudas and uh, his guide, Mikhail Servan. Medalist from Salt Lake Games in 02, second in slalom. And he picked up another silver medal in the G Super G in Turin in 2006. It's, uh, not as fluid and as quick between the turns as some before, and he's 3.82 off the pace of our leader. Red Kuzabov. And Dudas. Oh, just gets late on that left footed turn. And he's 7.24. He goes 12. Behind his compatriot, Michael Belladic. Now, Marek Kubaka, now he's skiing in the B3 class and he has blacked out goggles and he's missed the uh, second gate. And so he will have to retire, but uh, very, very difficult for Kubaka. He uh, had a similar mistake in the Super Combined, and sadly for Malek Kubaka, it's uh, DNF. Right. Kubaka and his guide, uh, Mitalia Kapisova, sadly don't make it past the second gate. Now, Patrick Hetzmer of the Czech Republic and Miroslav Mikala, the uh, next out of the gate. 
the first major finals. And Hepner skiing in the B2 class. One of the lower ranked skiers in this competition. And it would be a major surprise if he got near Fred Kruzabov's uh, time on this first slalom run. Good work though from Hetmer. 7.11 off the pace. And Akala, his guy, is going to have to keep the rhythm going for Hetmer. As he comes into this steep final pitch. Forty nine point six nine comes and goes, and Hetmer goes into thirteenth, eleven point nine one off the pace. Well, the noise level will go up in the finish area because there's another Russian athlete just polling out of the start hut. It's Alexander Fedoruk and his guide Artem Zadolskiska. And Fedoruk, sixth in the uh, World Cup standings. He's uh, raced just the two slalom races on the World Cup tour this year, both of them in Copper Mountain. Finishes there. They're identical. In fifth place in both of them. And Federick. Five seconds off the pace of his teammate at the first bit. Can he maintain it around that distance or? Will it grow up? How's it a guess? It's probably going to go. And uh, this guy's got to be careful there. Almost got more than two gates in front. And Federer is 10 seconds off the pace. But uh, waves to the crowd. Now, Dmitry Kuzmin of Ukraine. And Sergei Dorosh, his guide in the B2 class. And second lowest ranked skier in this competition. It's uh, first Paralympic Winter Games, mostly the technical disciplines of slalom and giant slalom. And you can see it's very different technique from uh, the quicker skiers who's stepping into his turns, which uh, makes it very difficult to carve them but he's doing a good job on those top turns and uh, he sets the time that's at 9.44 off our leader. Krizmin and Dorosh and into the final pitch. And remember the fastest gears will go in reverse order so Kuzmin will be first or second out of the gate in this second run. And he finishes and sets a time it's nearly 17 seconds off the pace and he gets a warm round of applause from the crowd gathered in the finish area. So the final skier in this visually impaired category for run one of the slalom is Damir Mizdrak of Croatia with Luka Ndebeljak, his guide. And 22 year old skiing in his first major competition. How will he fare here? And uh, you can see there's some ruts starting to form on the top of this piece, which uh, will prove problematic later on. So Mizdrak, 15 seconds off the pace at the first split time. 
Dobliaki's guy just taking a steady pace down this finishing pitch. You can see that how high the snow line is. And all the warm weather that we've been experiencing at Rosa Kuta and the Sochi Winter Paralympic Games. And Mizrak will finish. And he's down in a time of 1 minute 17.19, 27.5 off the pace. He will be first in the second run. Unless they put the cutoff at the uh, fastest 15, which we'll wait to get confirmation of. But this, or well, these are the standings after the first run of the men's slalom for the visually impaired category. And Oleg Kuzubov, the World Cup leader in the slalom discipline, leads the way half a second, just under half a second quicker than Jakob Kraker, the Super G champion. And uh, Chris Williamson of Canada, just the one non-finisher. So back in Kubaka. So the peace workers will get to work on trying to flatten out any lumps and bumps that are appearing on the course. Just a bit of snow left on the trees from. The, uh, 30 40 centimeters that she experienced yesterday. In the last 24 hours, but uh, a decent crowd at the bottom. You can see peace workers getting to work as we prepare for the men's slalom standing category run one. There are 51 athletes in this category, the largest field we've had in the Alpine ski. Okay, let's have a look at the start list then for this men's slalom standing category. The run one, uh, Vincent Gauthier Manuel, the world champion in standing slalom gets us underway but keep an eye out too for number five Alexei Bugayev the Paralympic champion Adam Hall number 13 there he'll be skiing with bib number 30 can he retain his title and as I say 51 athletes competing here a massive field and those starting nearer the top with uh, a much bigger advantage over those down the bottom because the piece was really rut up as we uh, go through this uh, very large field. Carlos Javier Codina Tomatis there of Argentina. Also down to ski in the snowboarding competition. Remember snowboarding being included in the Winter Paralympics for the very first time it's Mayor Venetian of Armenia will be our final skier the only Armenian athlete at these games Dutch supporters are here they're in fine voice so day six of competition here at the Rosa Kuta Alpine Centre and it is men's slalom day the standing category underway with Vincent Gauthier Manuel of France the world champion in this discipline seven classes in this standing classification LW 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 7, 6, 8 and 9 and uh, Gauthier Manuel skiing in the LW 6, 8, 2 class this is for skiers that have an impairment in one arm skiers that have combined arm leg impairments and Gauthier Manuel absolutely flying down this piece brilliant piece of skiing here from the Frenchman fantastic stuff and Gauthier Manuel taking advantage of a high draw number to set a really competitive time oh brilliant ski fantastic from Gauthier Manuel yeah he might well punch the air I think that's a fantastic run 
Now, Thomas Groschar of Austria in the LW2 class. The skiers that have a significant impairment in one leg. And uh, all the skiers in this class ski with just the one ski and the two outriggers. 20 years of age, his first Winter Paralympic Games. And let's see how he is faring on his uh, first run. 28.28 the time goes here, Manuel. Well, one and a half seconds from Groschar. It's not bad at all, is it? And Groschar also has a really nice rhythm going here. Oh, this is great skiing. Such a difference from the uh, slalom leg of the super combined when conditions are so difficult. The skiers can see here, they can let it run. And Groschar, 2.96 off the pace. Now, Toby Kane of Australia, again in the LW2 class, the 27-year-old. Has a bronze medal from the World Championships in Sestria in 2011 in this discipline, but uh, his best uh, Winter Paralympic finish in slalom is 11th in Vancouver. And Kane. A good go at this, and look at it, he's only 700 off the time of Gautier Manuel. Kane laying down a brilliant run here. Weight nice and forward on the ski, high in the line, getting the poles out the way with his shoulder blades, and 48.13 could be under threat here. Gautier Manuel's time, no. Eight tenths off the pace. But a good opening run from Toby Kane. Hiraku Misawa of Japan, the next to go. His best finish in the Paralympic slalom. He's sick in Turin. They're just being held here. Is there some uh, a piece worker on the track just uh, doing some repairs? Yes, there is. You can see them down there. And they're good to go now, Misawa. One podium in a major competition, which was third. And he's down. <coughs> Misawa. Down and out. Now, is he okay? Hopefully, nothing more than bruised pride. Oh, he straddled. No way back from there, I'm afraid. Oh, my God. Heavens, how flexible is he? Is he okay? This is standing, he's just disappointed. Bruised pride. So, Alexei Bugayev, silver in the downhill, bronze in the super G. What can this 16 year old Russian do here in the slalom ski? in the LW682 class, the same class as Gautier Manuel. His first Winter Paralympic Games, but he's a double silver medalist from the World Championships in giant slalom and super combined, despite breaking his arm in the slalom in Lamelina. Now, what has Bugayev got in store for us today? He lights up the piece when he skis. He's electric to watch, and he's absolutely motoring down this opening few turns. Eight tenths the right side of the clock, and Bugayev looking to give the home fans a grandstand finish here. It's only the first run, he's on the edge, he's really pushing it here. Now, how much has that cost him? 48.13, Bugayev, oh, it's brilliant. Absolutely brilliant from the 16-year-old. What an opening run that is. Now, Michael Brugge of Switzerland. That's a silver medal from the Nagano Winter Paralympics in 98. He was fourth in the slalom in 04. In the World Championships, that is. Now, two fifth place finishes already here in uh, Sochi. And he's the first of the LW4 class to ski, and that is for skiers, you can see him stop the time almost four seconds off the pace of Bugayev, so LW4 is similar to the skiers in sport class LW2, which is the likes of Toby Kane and Thomas Brochard that we've seen, 
but LW Force Gears have an impairment in one leg only, but with less activity limitation. So, Ruga tucks for the line and goes fifth. 6.66 seconds off the pace. No real disgrace there because Brugge have absolutely flew down this piece. Now, Alexander Alabiev of Russia, the next to go. No individual Winter Paralympic or Para World Championship medals. He's an official to win a medal here on home snow. He's a technical skier. He's fifth in the World Cup standing. And raced at the speed events as well. 11th in the downhill. Didn't get a finish in the Super G. And Oliviev 1.21 off the pace. Looks like it's going to be a shootout between uh, Bote Manuel and Bogayev, but we've still got the defending Inter Paralympic champion to come. Oliviev won't get inside the time of Bogayev, but he's only a second off the pace, goes third for the time being. Good run from Oliviev. Martin Wurtz of Austria in the LW682 class next to go. 14th in uh, giant slalom in the World Championships. Racing super combined and uh, the technical disciplines of slalom and uh, giant slalom here. And Wurtz doesn't have the same intensity about him that Bugayev had. And he's two and a half seconds off the pace. Now he's got the rhythm, the speed going across this flatter section. But can he keep it going on this steep final pitch? Nice turns from Wurtz, keeping it as straight as possible. Bugayev's 10, 47.69, won't be beaten, but how close can Wurtz get a better bottom half? Better bottom half from Wurtz, but the damage done on the top, 3.39 off the pace, goes into fifth for the time being. So we have a, a non-starter. Matthias Lanzinger was uh, due next, but uh, he's not in the start hut, but Cedric Amafwa Boissat is. His fourth Winter Paralympic Games, and his best chance of a podium in the field is in these technical disciplines. Maybe he knows something we don't. So Cedric Amafoy Boissat of France, the next to go in the LW4 class. Only one result so far, 10th in Super G, but he was fourth in the World Championships in La Molina last year in this discipline. The electric time in set by Alexei Bugayev of Russia. And uh, Alpha Boissat just uh, picking his way down these opening gates. Not as direct as Bugayev before him, hard on that left ski, saves off a bit of time. And he's at 3.1 off the pace. A decent finish third in the final slalom before these games in Sam Ritz, but uh, looks like he's going to leave himself a lot to do on the second round. 47.69 is in beta, and oh, far past that seven, 5.16 off the pace. Matt Hallett of Canada, the next to go. Hallett skiing in the LW2 class. Eighth in the world rankings, his third Winter Paralympics. And his best finish in slalom is 31st, but he's, uh, his world ranking uh, much higher than that. And doing a good job here, 1.44 off the pace of Bugayev. Hallett motoring on these final turns, he's got the rhythm. 
Now, can he keep the speed going without too much of a check that will shave off speed and time? Good run, fifth, 1.84 off the pace. Gives himself a good chance in run two. Now, Thomas Phil in the LW92 class, which is skiers that have an impairment that affects arms and legs. Some skiers in this class have coordination problems, such as spasticity or some loss of control over one side of their body. And depending on their abilities, they will ski with one or two skis and or one or two poles. And Phil, and the silver medalist in the Turin Games in slalom. That's, that stops the clock. Just under two seconds slower than Bogayev's time. Now, Phil in sight of the finish. Switzerland has had a disappointing Alpine Winter Paralympics. They're searching for a medal, 3.21 off the pace. Now, the defending Winter Paralympic champion is Adam Hall of New Zealand. Slalom is his strongest event. Third in the world, Lamelina, and he will make this noise all the way down. He's skiing in the LW1 class. This is sport class that is allocated to athletes with an impairment that strongly affects both legs. For an example, on above the knee amputation on both legs or significant muscle weakness in both legs. Bugayev's time too hot for the defending Winter Paralympic slalom champion. 2.42 off the pace. Good job being done by Adam Hall, though. Won three slalom races on the World Cup to this year. The Bugai has time. A really, really good one. And Hall sick for the time being. 3.02 off the pace. Mitchell Gourlay of Australia in the LW682 class. The next to go. Australian just getting bumped around a little bit by the ruts that have formed on the racing line just a little late in that racing line which is why he's getting bumped around so much but 27.48 is the time of Bugayev and Gourlay doing well just over two seconds off the pace I'm not sure anybody's going to get close to Bugayev's time Gourlay well, though, has a high world ranking, so he might fancy his chances. Um, but a second run charge, seventh for the time being, three seconds off the pace for the Australian Mitchell Gourlay. Next up is Braden Luscombe. Had a really, really good slalom run in the super combined he's uh, currently second in that competition with the super g still to be raced and is going ahead on day seven of competition here in sochi had a difficult start to these games didn't finish either of the training runs of the downhill then he didn't finish the downhill didn't finish the super g so the uh, good slalom run in the super combined would have done his confidence the world of good and it looks like he's bringing it to the table here 1.63 off the pace at the first intermediate time check how close can he get to Bugayev and the answer 2.25 goes sick for the time being good run from the 21 year old James Stanton of the USA, the next to go in the LW4 class, just being held as uh, the peace workers do their thing. Now he gets the nod and he holds himself out of the start gate and is immediately into trouble. That's his first major 
event and he was inspired to take up Slalom Racing or Para Racing. And we're watching the Vancouver Winter Paralympics. Three point six eight off the pace. Stanton looks to try and get the turns back under control, but it's just a little late in the line. Too much turn, too much pressure on the edge. But at 13, 5.32 off the pace. No disgrace there. Alexander Vetrov of Russia, the next to ski. Vetrov in the LW57 class for athletes that have an impairment in both arms. Some athletes have amputations and others have limited muscle power co coordination problems. And they will race down the slopes without ski poles. Phenomenally difficult to ski without poles, even harder to race without poles. And Vetrov is 3.96 off the pace. Good start from Vetrov. He would have gone to the Vancouver Games, but uh, he was 14 then, 18 now. And Vetrov goes into 15th position for the time being. Good run from the uh, Russian youngster. Christoph Boda of Switzerland, next to the LW681 class. And Boda, 23 year old, his uh, first Winter Paralympic Games. Had ambitions before his accident of making. The Swiss able-bodied team still continued in set passion for alpine racing and it's 5.63 off the pace. All the skiers we're going to see from now until the end are uh, coming and descending world ranking. So, for that, Excess points of 37.590 being the uh, best. And all the points totals will be higher here. And he's 16th after the first run. Now, Andre Szczesny of Poland in the LW2 class. He's uh, second Winter Paralympics. This is his best discipline. Seventh at the World Champs in La Molina. Not doing a good job on these opening turns. Three point nine nine off the pace. And it's all about trying to get in the top fifteen or so if you can. Get yourself some better conditions on the second run which sees the fastest finishes go in reverse order. So the quickest, the Bugayev, will be the last person to ski. Of the uh, fastest skiers and uh, well, Chesney's 14th. Now, Kakuta Koiki of Japan. 11th in the World Championships of 2009 in Pyeongchang, his best uh, Finish in the major, he was 18th in Vancouver. Now, Kuta Koiki finds himself 2.88 off the pace, and he straddled and he is out. And disappointment for him. And 
still have a couple of races to come. But sadly for Gakuta Koiki, who won't finish. Now, did he straddle or did he just... Yeah, he straddled that red gate there. And gets high-sided onto the snow. Yeah, it's for Lucky from our wizard. <laughs> so, Romain Ribou of France in the LW92 class, the next to ski. More of a GS man, a giant slalom man than a slalom man, but let's see how he goes down here. Reboot. Twelfth in the downhill, seventh in the Super G. It's 3.69 off the time of Bugayev at the checkpoint. In sight of the finish and the crowd start to lift the volume as Reboot comes to the last couple of gates. Do that verticale, two from home. We'll finish 13, 5.25 off the pace for Roma Ribou of France. Now, Masahiko Tokai of Japan, the next to ski. Tokai skiing in the LW3 class. Now, the sport class is for athletes who have a moderate impairment in both legs. They will ski with two skis. And a prosthetic. Some LW3 skiers have mild coordination problems or muscle weakness in both legs or a below knee amputation in both legs. The Tokai. 3.53 off the pace of uh, Bugayev. Doing some nice turns on these uh, on this bottom pitch, although he's a little heavy on that left ski for that red gate and 15th, 5.34 off the pace for Masahiko Tokai on run one. Now Ralph Green of the United States of America skis next. LW2 class. The first African American to represent the USA in the Para Alpine skiing. And the green has raced at three slalom events on the World Cup this year. My 17th in those World Cup standings, but uh, going nicely through that pattern of gates. And uh, many people together towards the end. Had a DNF in the Super G, but Green is going to get to the bottom here. 19th, 9.01 off of the pace set by Alexei Bugayev of Russia. Stanislav Lotska of the Czech Republic. His sixth Winter Paralympic Games. His first visit in Lillehammer in 94, where he was third in the slalom. Sixth in 02 in Salt Lake. Lotska skiing in the LW681 class. Only 7.48 has come and gone by 6.77 seconds. Muska dealing with the turns okay. More measured first run. Trying to stay out of the ruts and stay high on the racing line. And we'll finish at a time of 59.6. 
2-0 for his 21st, 11 and a half seconds off the pace. Martin France of Slovakia now. The next to ski, France in the LW91 class. The skiers are having an impairment that affects arms and legs. Close to that, getting, using the helmet to get it out of the way. And France doing a good job, and he's what 5.15 off the pace of Bugayev. Now the difficult verticale section on this final pitch just coming up. Safely negotiated, two from home, stops the clock, 55.77, 19, eight seconds off the pace. Martin Falk of Austria in the LW4 class. 12th in Vancouver. However, he was a bronze medalist in Salt Lake at the Winter Paralympic Games there and he was a silver medalist in slalom in the 04 World Championships in Austria. So, 46 years of age, one of the uh, senior starters. I think he is the oldest in this field. And Falk using his experience to stop the clock in a time of 54.22. Go 17, six and a half seconds off the pace. Kirk Schornstein of Canada, the next to ski. LW681 class. The skiers have an impairment in one arm and they will compete with one ski pole only. Also skiers with combined arm and leg impairments ski in uh, this sport class as well. No, oh, Sean Stein. That's behind the time of Bug I have, no surprise there, but he's 4.39 off the pace. And the 20th fastest through there. Sean Stein stops the clock, 6.59 off the time of Bugayev, who's 18. Now, James Whitley of Great Britain, 16 years of age. His first Winter Paralympic Games, skiing in the LW573 class. This is athletes and then pairing in both arms. Some athletes have amputations and others have limited muscle power or coordination problems. And he will race down the slopes without ski poles. And so Whitley had a good job. 4.58 off the pace. That's 21st position speed. Sight of the finish. The crowd start to ramp it up, and Whitley doing a good job of getting a little late in the line, but survives and goes 21st, 7.15 off the pace. Patrick Parnell of the United States. Next, his first Winter Paralympic Games. He's only skiing slalom. Trying to make sure of these opening turns. Twelve to come in this category after Parnell. And 
and uh, going okay here. This Parnell, but he's uh, over 10 seconds off the pace of Bugayev, 12.09. Now he just lets it go a little bit, and now back onto the seat, a speed check as he goes into the first combination of gates. And the conservative run from Parnell sees him finish 106.84, 19 19.15 seconds slower than Bugayev. Now, Robin Koosh, and if you follow the FIS World Cup, you might have heard of a skier called Didier Koosh, who was one of the best speed skiers of his generation, and this is his nephew. 15 years of age, Robin Koosh skiing in the LW92 class. And he's doing okay on those top turns, 7.01 off the pace. Koosh doing a good job, but he's getting very late in the line. Does a good job of getting it back under control. Touche. Oh, well done. Yeah, good job. Gets through that verticale section, goes 25th, 9.72 off the pace. Jockey Rothlisberger of Switzerland, the next to go in the LW571. 16th in the Super G. Superstitious gear, always wears a bandana when he races. Now, Roethlisberger. In fact, got it round his leg now. That was the uh, leg guard Velcro strap. Roethlisberger, 7.77 off the pace of Bugayev. No one's going to beat Bugayev's time now. The second run set up nicely. Bugayev with a advantage of 0.44 with Gautier Manuel. Labiev puts Russia second off the pace of Bugayev. So Russia in a good position to win yet more medals here at their uh, Winter Paralympic Games. And Rothersberger stops the clock just under a minute, 12.02 off the pace. It's fun time 59.71 for run one. Now Jorge Miguelev of Chile. The next to go in the LW4 class. You can see the ruts starting to form now. His uh, third Winter Paralympic Games. And he finished one slalom race in the previous two. That was 43rd back in uh, Turin in 2006. Now Miguelo. He's the top profit. 33.35, 5.87 off the pace. And Miguel is really Chilean. Skier, no, he has Santiago Berger, excuse me, coming a little later on, but Miguel is 26, 10.29 off the pace. Quickly back up to the top, Hans-Jörg Latschner of Italy in the LW92 class. 14th, oh no, Latschner's down. I can say 14th in the Super G. I'm still not sure he was enjoying that too much. Is there a straddle? Did he just get it wrong? There was a straddle. That's not a laugh with one of the Austrian coaches. Now Toshi Hiro Abe of Japan should be the next in the start gate. LW681. Oh, 
His first Winter Paralympic Games were in Alberville in 1992, would you believe? Said in the media guide that he wanted to ski without regrets, as this was probably his last Winter Games. And the 42 year old is uh, going nicely on the top turns. 5.04 off the pace. Acceptable, perfectly acceptable skiing from Toshihiro Abe. Now, what can he do on these final turns, on the final pitch? Oh, he's skiing it well, isn't he? Good skiing. Just gets inside that final gate. 20 seconds, 7.66 off the pace. 55.35. Alexander Akhmadulin uh, from Russia. And yet next to go. Akhmadulin uh, skiing the LW572 class. The athletes have an impairment in both arms. Some athletes have amputations. Others have limited muscle power or coordination problems. As you can see, athletes in this class ski without poles. Doolin. Mm, some nice turns. Good recovery on the inside ski. 5.62 off the pace. He's just getting a little hot in the line, isn't he? The crown lift it once more. No. Gets high sided and is out. No concern on the face. He's okay. He was getting very hot in the line, wasn't he? A little earlier on. Yeah. Well, he's got pushed wide into the soft stuff and it's just high sided him. Jonathan Luan of the United States is the next to ski. Luan in the LW3 class. And he is out as well. 43-year-old. Fails to finish the first slalom run. Oh, I got the line wrong. Too late in it. So 15 left to race in this men's slalom for the standing category. The first of whom is Jasper Balkan of Belgium in the LW91 class. And Balkan, 12th at the World Championships in La Molina last year. He wants a top 10 finish at these games. But uh, the long-term goal is a medal in Pyeongchang in 2018. 21 years of age. And this will be a real test for him, a real test for all the athletes. It's a very, very steep slalom run. Steep at the top and steep at the bottom. In the middle where Falcon is now, it is slightly flatter. When he gets over this terrain change, it really bites. And Balkan doing a decent job of staying upright. Tentative, but you can hardly blame him. He wants to be back for the second run. And Balkan, oh, just gets a little low in that line, but it's near enough the end not to cost him. And he finishes, much to his delight, 18 seconds off the pace. Goes into 30th position. Mads Andreasen of Norway, the next to go to his first Winter Paralympics, like many before. Started Paris Alpine skiing just three years ago. And uh, Andreasen skiing in the LW681 class.
first time strip seems him well off the pace but by how much 8.82 seconds slower than Alexis Bugayev our leader all the skiers from now to the end have a lower world ranking with 13 to come after Andreas and have a lower world ranking than the Norwegian Andreasen is down just over a minute. One minute, 0.74. Goes 30, 13.05 off the pace. Hugo Bregnan of Italy now. Second Winter Paralympic Games for Bregnan. 40 years of age. And his first time split. And he's going to be somewhere off the pace of Bugayev. And the answer is 6.17. So, not a bad opening section for Bregant. Into this final steep pitch. Bregant looking to try and get as close as possible to 47.69. Stops the clock on run one at 57.94. He's happy. Ian Jensing of the United States in the LW92 class. Only racing slalom here. Only race GS in Vancouver. So Jansen with the first intermediate time split. Drops the clock 8.83 off the pace. You can hear the American coach on the side of the piece cheering him on. Jansen. Doing what he has to do to complete this first run. Widen the line, but it's got him down. 15.56 off the pace, and you can see what it means to him, and that's what it's all about. Fukutaro Yamazaki of Japan in the LW92 class, the next to ski. Racing the technical disciplines in slalom and GS in his first uh, major competition in the World Power World Championships or Winter Paralympics. And Yamazaki just making sure of these turns. 22 years of age and now the crowd can see him in the finish area a good look at it as it comes down this steep final pitch and we make his way to the bottom Yamazaki through that verticale get gate section and finishes in the time of 105.07 17.5 3.8 off the pace is uh, 33rd after the first run. Marco Zanotti of Italy in the LW4 class. The next gear out of the hut. Another in his uh, first Winter Paralympic game. And for Zanotti and all these skiers with the highest draw numbers, it's all about trying to outperform 
your world ranking. See if you can finish above those that are ranked higher in the world than you. There's uh, no chance of them getting in front of the time of uh, Alexei Bugayev because Bugayev absolutely flew down this piece. It was a, a wonderful piece of skiing. Him and Vincent Gautier Manuel, the two standout skiers on this opening run of the men's slalom for the standing category. Zanotti, 14.05 off the pace, goes 30 seconds. Next to go, it's Mehmet Cetic of Turkey, the flag bearer for his country. In the opening ceremony, being in the LW4 class. Now, his goal to try and uh, get in front of the likes of uh, Zanotti and uh, Yamazaki for the Gans. The first time split. He's uh, 15.59 seconds off the pace. That is uh, 36th position. 36 have finished this run, so we didn't put him in last spot. But he needs to try and find a bit of speed on these bottom turns. He is the lowest ranked skier to go at this point. And he's at the bottom of the par 112.53, 24.84 off the pace. But nevertheless, he is down now. Carlos Javier Codino Tomatis of Argentina, who is also competing in the men's snowboarding, or he's down to compete in the men's snowboarding. We'll have to wait and see as to whether or not he actually takes part. He's skiing in the LW4 class. First time we've seen it. Imagine athletes competing in the Alpine here at these games. And Cadena Tomatis does a decent job on the top turns. 9.87 seconds off the pace of Bugayev. Now, he'll be back on day seven. Going off to his left, that is where the Panel Snowboard course is. And Cadena Tomatis stops the time 102.87. Goes 33rd. Now, Jukoslav Milosevic of Serbia, another flag bearer from the opening ceremony. In his uh, first Winter Paralympic Games. 45 years of age and Milosevic again skiing a more rounded line just making sure he gets to the bottom of course I have to say holding up better than I thought it might 13.74 off the pace of Bugayev The crowd start to cheer once more as they do as every skier comes over the last terrain change onto this final pitch, the final home straight. And Milosevic finishes 1.10.34. Goes 38 for the time being. Andrea Valenti of Italy now. Just 16 years of age and Valenti skiing in the LW92 class. And just remind you that skiers in this sport class have an impairment that affects arms and legs. Some skiers in the class have coordination problems, such as plasticity, or some loss of control of one side of their body. And they're depending on their ability 
Or ski with one or two skis and one or two poles. Well, two skis and one pole for Valenti, who is 12.46 off the pace at the uh, first split. And Valenti, you hear the cheers of the crowd in the finish area. Every skier coming down here gets a huge cheer from those gathered at the bottom. They appreciate what they're seeing, and what they're seeing is some good skiing. And Valenti, 19.36 off the pace, goes into 38 spots. Now, Sadek Kalor from the Islamic Republic of Iran, the next to go. In the LW2 class. Skiers that have a significant impairment in one leg, for example, have an impaired leg from birth. The one ski and the two outriggers required in this class. Only racing slalom. He's 14th in Salt Lake. Winter Games there, 34th in Vancouver. He's 16th in the World Championships in 04. The 35 year old. Oh, big mistake, but it was on the steep, so he won't have shaved off too much speed, but he's in trouble on these final few turns, gets it back together, finishes. 29th, 10.38 off the pace. Yeah, decent run from Calor. Now, Santiago Vega of Chile. Another youngster, just 16 years of age for the Vega. LW4 class. And you can cut a shin guard. Stand out against the snow. And set. And, uh, slides his way through this combination of gates that uh, was set by Yutaka. Kirikubu of Japan. 54 gates in total on this slalom track. Three more to come after Vega in the standing category. And Vega stops time 17.69. Slower than Bugayev. Uh, who's going to have bragging rights in the Chile camp? Here he comes now. Final few turns. And Vega stops the clock. 1.14.04. The 16-year-old delighted to finish. And he's behind Jorge Miguel, his teammate now. Number 66, Senad Turkovic. Of Bosnia. Herzegovina. And uh, he's lost his ski, and that will be the end of his challenge. Uh, he came to support, but he's not going to finish, sadly. Only a couple of turns into his challenge. Turkovic is out. suggest that the binding not done up tight enough if it's released just on that fall. Disappointing for his supporters. And, uh, just having some help getting his ski back on. And now Ramel Gayazov of Uzbekistan gets his challenge underway in the LW682 class. Yeah, another flag bearer in his first major championship. The flag bearer from the opening ceremony. And guys, of not sure will have come across a uh, track as hard as this, as rough as this. Doing a good job of negotiating the top steep turns. And 
28 year old. Stop feet clock at the first time check, 21.64 off the pace of Alexei Bugayev. Guy is off. You hear the cheers of the crowd now. Pan back, you see them screwing him in. 47.69, he's not close to that. He's 36.49 off the pace. Now our final skier in this standing class is uh, Mir Avanesian of Armenia. He made his debut 16 years ago. Skiing at LW571 class. Skiers are having impairment in both arms. Some athletes have amputations and others have limited muscle power or coordination problems. Vanessian made his debut 16 years ago, 36 in Vancouver, the only Armenian athlete with the games here. 14.81 off the time. The lowest ranks of the 51 skiers that started this category. Can he finish above 43rd, which is currently the bottom place? And Avanesian is almost home, a little late in that verticale section, but he's got through it and he stops the clock 41st. Well, he may be the lowest rank, but he's not the lowest for the finishes in the first run. So let's have a look at these standings after that first run. And the top two absolutely blew the rest of the field away. Alexi Bugayev and Vincent Gautier Manuel with some quite brilliant slalom skiing. But it's tight as well for uh, the bronze medal slot between Alabiev Kane and possibly Matt Hallett of Canada of the 51 that uh, started this, or we're down to start, 44 finished. And uh, they, the fastest skiers, wherever that cutoff point comes, we'll be uh, told about that a little later. We'll go in reverse order and then we'll have the slower skiers after that. But some good skiing from these lower rank skiers and it's all about personal best for them now but the battle for gold between Bugayev and Gautier Manuel should be fascinating So with one more category to come, the course workers try and do their best to get rid of the big, big ruts that are forming. The men's slalom sitting category, run one, of this Alpine program here at these 2014 Winter Paralympic Games. Let's have a look at the start list. Josh Duke there, number two, a silver medalist from Vancouver who will step up into the vacuum that has been left by Martin Braxenthaler of Germany who won the last three Winter Paralympic slalom titles he's retired who will take over at the top Philippe Bonademan of uh, Austria there number 13 he's the reigning para world champion in slalom he was a bronze medalist in Vancouver behind Nduik and Braxenthaler. There are 41 competitors in this uh, sitting category. And the piece of the time, Pelaris gets down, will be very bumpy indeed. Or run really direct 
back and then never change it back in around line. Come on down. Yeah. Well, there's not much room. And you can hear the coaches just speaking to their athletes. And Thanks. There's two options. You either try and ski the perfect racing line and hope that you can survive the rumps and lumps and bumps, or you ski high in the line and a little conservatively. Yes, you may be slower, but the chances are you'll get to the bottom. But a lot of these guys put the pedal to the metal. They're not afraid to let it hang out. And, uh, well, something like the super combined, we might see quite a few falls. Johan Tabelé of France will get this men's slalom race for the sitting category underway here in Sochi. His third Winter Paralympic Games, he's never finished on the podium. He's got four World Championship medals though, including a silver in slalom from Sestriere in 2011. Seventh in the downhill, he didn't finish the Super G. And he set a competitive time. The snow conditions here at the Rosa Kuta Alpine Centre are uh, a little better than they have been on previous days of competition. 33.49, the first and only time check you get on the run. But there are some big ruts on this course which have been caused by the visually impaired and standing skiers that have skied before the sitting category and we will see some of the sit skiers taking it fairly gingerly on the opening turns or the steep turns but uh, Tabalay decent time 55.56 and I think he's enjoyed it as well good ski from the Frenchman now Josh Dueck of Canada the second skier to go and you can see he is hoping for a more uh, Round a line, safer option on the steepest part before he injects the speed. Winner of the uh, first slalom on the World Cup season back in August of last year in uh, Coronet Park in New Zealand. Silver medalist in Vancouver behind Martin Plaxenthaler of Germany, who has since retired. Plaxenthaler. Oh, he's missed the red gates. And Duke is out of the competition. And the Canadian coaches are very disappointed, as are the Canadian fans. Georg Keiter of Germany, the next to ski. Kaita skiing in the LW10 class. There are three classes in uh, this category, LW10, 11, and 12. LW10 is for skiers that have no or minimal trunk stability, for example, due to spinal cord injuries or spina bifida. And therefore, rely mainly on their arms to maneuver the sit ski. And Kaita his first Winter Paralympic Games. He's probably got his best chance of meddling in giant slalom. That's him for the safer rounder route. A more conservative line. And he's 5.82 and that is why. Oh no, he's hit the gate and he's uh, lost his ski. Well, I said we might see a few non-finishers in this category. Uh, two of the first three have failed to make it to the bottom. Leo Kaita DNS, unfortunately for him. And so Roman Rabel of Austria will have to wait until Kaita is out of the racing line. Course workers now I'll try and help uh, Kaita to back onto his skis. Well, he straddled the red, then hit the blue, and the ski just popped straight off, and oh, no way for him to go, sadly. And the lift 
him up and uh, off him into the binding. Meanwhile, news that are still to come. Wait, Thomas Nolte of Germany has a word with that one of his coaches. Dietmar Dorn from Austria, waiting to go is his compatriot, Wormer Rabel. 54 gates on this slalom course set by uh, Yutaka Kirikubu of Japan and Roman Rabel is ready to go. Oh. He polls his first Winter Paralympic Games. He was fifth in the slalom at the World Championships in Lamellini. He was fourth in the downhill here on the opening day of competition of the Alpine disciplines. And uh, Rabot skiing a more direct line. He's making it look pretty easy so far. Now, can he maintain this good form? Only one finisher so far. That was Johan Tabele. And Tabele's time at the first intermediate was 33.49. Now, Rabot, how close is he to that? And the answer is he's just outside by a third of a second. Rabel. Oh, yeah. Decent job. Uh, quite a few poles across the body and underneath the helmet. On the neck. That's uh, fairly painful. Now, 55.56. Just outside. He found a tenth on that bottom part. But he's second for the time being. Roman Rabel. In touch. Now, Andreas Kapfinger of Austria. Twice fourth in the uh, Winter Paralympics in 2010 and 02. Can he find that little bit extra that will get him onto the podium? Well, he's adopting the conservative tactic of uh, skiing around the line, trying to stay out of the big ruts that have formed on this racing line after uh, visually impaired. And standing skiers, you can see 72 skiers have uh, taken on this track prior to uh, Capfinger. He's only racing slalom here in Sochi. And Johan Tablet, our leader from France, had a first split time of 33.49. And Capfinger, five seconds off of the pace. Catfinger inside of the finish. The crowd start to make some noise. How close can he get to Tabellate? Remember, just over five seconds off the pace at the first intermediate. Catfinger skidding some turns, putting some speed checks in. Will finish 6.71 off the pace. Frederic Francois of France, the next to go in the LW11 class, which is for skiers that have good abilities in their upper trunk, very limited control in their lower trunk and hips, as it would be the case for skiers with lower spinal cord injuries. His first Winter Paralympic Games, and that is because he broke his clavicle in three places in January 2010, just before Vancouver. And that's what kept him out of the sport for a year. Now, his compatriot Johan Tabelet leads the way and will continue to do so. Francois 1.62 off the pace. Roman Rabel currently in second, 0.23 slower than Tabellet, so not a lot of space between the top two, but plenty of space between Rabel and Catfinger, who's currently in third. And Francois has to put in a big turn just to check some speed off and make it back across the hill. 55.56 is not going to be beaten, but how close will Francois be? The answer is 3.06 off the pace, third for the time being for the Frenchman.
Dietmar Dorn of Austria, 13th in Vancouver. Has a bronze medal in the slalom from La Molina last year, which was the World Championships, the Para Alpine World Championships. And a mixture of caution and aggression from Dawn. Thirty-three point four nine, the time of table eight, and uh, well, he's within a second here, Dawn. Now, what can he do on these final turns? The final pitch. Can he let the mono ski run? Can he avoid any heavy edge checks? The answer is not a bad job at all. Yeah, good work. 106 off the pace. France lead from Austria and then Austria again now. Jean-Yves Lemur of France skiing the LW12-2 class. Sport class increased skiers with normal or only slightly decreased trunk function and leg impairments. The skiers with leg impairments in sport class is LW1-4, to four, which is in the standing category often also fit this sport class so they can choose if they want to see ski sitting or standing uh, in the beginning of their careers now Lemur who won a slalom race in Copper Mountain back in January this is his best discipline of the two technicals that he's oh no 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 well, I'm not sure what happened there. It looked like he just got his tip of the ski into the snow and it pitched him forward. And, uh, let's have another look. Well, he sort of lost the edge control, didn't he? And uh, when it did bite, it flipped him forward and up into the air. Consequently, when he landed, it was too much for the binding and it released. <laughs> super check is English. Jelenic. Jelenic enjoying himself at the top of the mountain. So Lemur back into the binding and uh, makes his way to the side of the piece. And next up, it's Heath Calhoun of the United States, fourth in the Super G, his second Winter Paralympic Games, fifth in the Slalom in La Molina at the World Championships. Qualified ski instructor. Calhoun just making sure these top turns and now he starts to go to work to try and get the rhythm back good job on the opening turns from Calhoun but how close will he be to the 33.49 time of our leader Johan Tablet for the first time check time check coming up in a couple of gates time and Calhoun is going okay 1.15 off the pace now he lets the monoski go. You can see how the suspension underneath the chair is being made to work. And we'll try and keep the ski in contact with the snow if we can. Near enough impossible to change direction if the ski leaves the snow. Calhoun inside of the finish. Good ski, 2.22, goes four. Highest place for the non-Europeans at the moment. Now, Gerald, Gerald Hayden in the United States. First and only time we're going to see him at these Winter Paralympics because he's only skiing slalom. Hayden skiing the LW12-1 class. His third Winter Paralympic Games. He was 16th in Vancouver. How will he fare here in Sochi? 
points for the first time. So 33.49 is the lead time of Johan Tablet. And Hayden is within a second, just over three quarters of a second off the place of Johan Tablet. Just gets a little bump. As he comes onto the steep section, loses the right outrigger slightly. Now he's in trouble. Oh, just makes the red gate. But you can see if you leave the snow, it makes life very difficult for you. And he's only two seconds off the pace. So it would have been a lot, lot closer had he not had that big mistake. Dino Sokolovic of Croatia, the next ski fifth in the, the World Cup rankings for slalom. He won the first of the two slums and Samaritz in February this year. He was second in the second one. Got a chance here. Ooh, got to keep that ski on the snow. He jumps into that <laughs> left turn. Kolovic. Oh, yes, he's skiing well. One and a half seconds. Inside the time of Tabalek. Sokolovic, he likes this discipline, but he's got this steep section coming into the finish to negotiate the money turns. Oh, he's flying here. Sokolovic, if he can keep this going, should have a very healthy lead over Tabalek. Sokolovic, brilliant stuff. Sokolovic must lead. Oh, it's a fantastic first run from Dilo Sokolovic, 2.82 inside the time of Tabalay. Now Takeshi Suzuki of uh, Japan. Slalom world champion from 2011. He too has a first and second on the World Cup Tour this year. But his 1-2 came in Copper Mountain, second in the first slalom at Copper Mountain before he won the slalom the following day. Probably more of a GS man, I would say, than a slalom man, but he's pretty well threatened if he can put together a decent run. He's only a tenth off the pace of Sokolovic now. If he can fly down this second part of the run like Sokolovic did, then he's got a chance. Different style, type of tactic, getting that outrigger up in front of him to knock the gates out of the way. Sokolovic was very direct in the line through here. Suzuki not quite as straight and uh, 52.74 comes and goes in 1.61 off the pace for Suzuki. Sokolovic brilliant wasn't he down there now the favourite the world para champion Philippe Von Adiman only seventh in the World Cup this season a uh, Silver, a bronze medalist, sorry, from the Vancouver Winter Paralympics. And just a little tentative on these opening turns. Can he get the ski flowing more freely further down? Interestingly, the poles for the gates used here. And he's almost a second off the pace for Sokolovic. The poles used here are slightly thinner than the ones you see on the FIS. World Cup to the able-bodied World Cup to the reason for that is the uh, 30 mil diameter of the FIS poles was causing uh, injury to the skiers uh, shoulders and so the IPC reduced the width of the poles only by 3 mil to 27 and as a result they can uh, ski into them and knock them out of the way on Adam and the favorite goes third 1.85 off the pace Taiki Mori of Japan, the next to ski in the LW11 class. And Mori, a silver medalist behind Bon Adiman for the World Championships. And second in the Super G in day three of competition. And, uh, Sochi. And Mori 
He's kind of way off the pace, 2.22. Sokolovic was brilliantly quick down this bottom section. So any skier that makes up time between the interval and the bottom will really be going some. I think most of these skiers will lose time on Sokolovic between the time check and the finish. And Mori is going to be one of those. Remember, 2.22 off the pace at the at the interval well he's almost uh, doubled the gap there Thomas Nolte of Germany in the LW11 class this arguably his best discipline a bronze medalist from the world championships in 2011 in Sestriere a couple of tentative turns on the top because of the ruts of the form now he lets it go just injects a bit of speed after a couple of turns. And he's into the challenge. Can he keep the rhythm? Can he maintain it? It's just a bit bitty, isn't it? It's just skidding the turns in. That's because of these big, big ruts. Mikolovic definitely having an advantage with uh, his later skiers with his early bib draw. Uh, Nolte, 1.29 off the pace. Let's see if anybody can make time up between here and the bottom. And so Kolovic, he was absolutely brilliant, wasn't he? And his lead over Suzuki, 1.61. Suzuki currently in second place. And you can see Nolte having to put in the edge checks to control his speed. And the time difference of 1.29 is going to be a lot more from the finish line. Nolte, a couple of gates from home, stops the clock 3.33 off the pace, goes into sixth position. Yasmin Bamba of the United States, the next to ski in the LW11 class. Bamba, a former Serbian athlete, represented Serbia in Vancouver, where he was the first Serbian athlete to compete at the Power Winter Games. Now skiing for the United States, having taken up citizenship. Bamba, seven from the super, he didn't finish the downhill. Not many before him, just making sure of these top turns, skiing it more roundly than Sokolovic who is very direct now 2.29 Sokolovic from here on in was just a man possessed it was fantastic sit skiing from the Croatian and he deservedly leads by over one and a half seconds and I can't see anybody getting close to him Bamba 2.29 off the pace at the top. Sees the gap double. More than double by the bottom. He's ninth for the moment. Akira Kano of Japan. Gold medalist in the downhill. A gold medalist in the Super G. He's claimed all the gold so far in this men's category, but he's getting bounced around. And the opening turns. Kano, I think, will prefer the GS to this technical slalom course. He's struggling. He's getting bounced around. He's getting late in the line, but he's using his skill and his confidence from those two gold medals to keep himself upright and still going. But it's quicker, possibly, than the numbers we've seen before. I think maybe that's what can be thrown into the line. Now, where is he here? Well, 2.61. It's more frantic than others. It's a little bit more out of control than some we've seen before. Now, in that verticale section, get him his rhythm back. No, it can't. A heavy right edge check before another heavy left one. I think he's taken a lot of the speed off of Kano. Couple of gates from home. And Sokolovic sees up another one. And Kano's gap doubles between the interval and the bottom. Kenji Natsumi 
of Japan, the next to go. Another who's more of a speed skier, who's going to struggle on these top turns with these big ruts that have formed in the line. The floodlights are on to light the way, and that might help them pick out these ruts a bit more. But difficult conditions for these late sit skiers. Course cutting up badly. It's not the widest of courses, so it's very difficult for the course setter, especially for the second run, to find a line that's not going to have been affected by run one. And Satsume sees the clock stop 5.46 off of calculated time of uh, the Polovic, our leader from Croatia. It's a battle rather than a fluid ski from him. It's a good battle to the end. Natsume will finish 11 seconds off the pace. That's roughly doubling every time a skier gets down from the interval to the finish, the gap to our leader Sokolovic. Now, this is uh, Scott Mayer of the United States, his uh, first Winter Paralympics. He didn't race slalom in the World Championships in La Molina. He is only skiing slalom. And uh, taking a bit more of a direct line than, say, Natsume before him. So Kolovic is time, 31.91, and Mayer. Well, it looks as if he's been more direct than Natsumi, but uh, he's going to be slower than Natsumi at the time check. 6.71 off the pace of Sokolovic. Sokolovic has really put the pressure on the rest of the field to ski the second run quickly because he leads by over one and a half seconds, almost two seconds to third place. And he will have the luxury and knowing what he has to do in his second run. Sometimes that can be a hindrance, sometimes it can be a help. May a little late in the line, but he gets that. And 11.34 uh, off the pace of Sokolovic. Cyril Moore now of France. Again, more of a super combined and GS skier than a slalom skier. Hasn't finished a race here in Sochi. DNF the downhill and Super G and he's struggling on these top turns. He's very late in the line. It's uh, firefighting from Moore at the moment. He's got it back under control now though. And Moore. Stops the time well, 2.33. That's one of the better skis we've seen so far. And more. Up into the final pitch. Now he's got speed like Sokolovic, but he hasn't got the direction. He had to have a heavy edge check to get back on track. 52.74. More was 2.33 down at the first time split. And at the finish line, he is 4.19. So, into ninth position for Cyril Moore. Caleb Brousseau of Canada in the LW12-1 class. His first Winter Paralympic Games picked up a bronze in the Super Combined and his outrigger just gets left behind him there. That will twist the body and make life difficult. Oh, dear, 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 dear. he's getting too straight in the line getting bounced out on these ruts and that makes life very difficult. Now he lets it run, but he's going to have to nail the turns, otherwise he's going to get aerial. And off the steep and into the flatter part of the course. I say flatter, it's all relative. And Puso 2.84 off the pace now. Let's just keep... Whoa, no, 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 no. And his ski has come off. Well, the binding is released. And we didn't quite see 
power wide. It's just extraordinary. He's just come out the front door. Well, another skier who's uh, finding doesn't seem to be up and up on the dim rating. The Canadian supporters are enjoying themselves. There's the Japanese crew. They're waiting for Akira Taniguchi. Each uh, nation can have no more than five skiers in any category. And they're watching at the top of the hill on a portable device. Amazing what technology can do now. This is Maurizio Nicoli of Switzerland. And uh, safe to say, he doesn't seem to be enjoying these top turns. Nice, oh, got more of a rhythm going. No, 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 no. And uh, you could hear that Nicoli wasn't enjoying himself before he went down. Uh, he's going to continue. He is. He's going to continue. He's going to be miles off the pace. And in fact, second fall. And uh, enough is enough. And uh, Mauricio Nicoli retires and locks uh, up a DNF. And Switzerland's terrible time at these Winter Paralympic Games continues. Shrugs from the coaches. Park Yong Short of Korea. More of a speed man than a technical skier, so let's see how he fares in this uh, very difficult, tight technical slalom track. In the LW11 class. Not doing a bad job with these opening turns, I have to say, Park. So some of his time, I don't think he's going to be beaten here. By any of the remaining skiers. And Park, and he's still upright, he's still going, and he's 7.62 off the pace. And he, he lets the mono ski run just after that time check. Oh, just gets pitched forward but recovers. But you can see these big ruts that making life very difficult for the six gears. This is better. Some good turns from Park. 7.62 seconds off the pace of Sokolovic at the uh, Time check at the bottom. Oh, he just heads off in the wrong direction. And at the bottom, he's 11.82 off the pace. Not bad skiing on that bottom part, actually. He would have been a lot closer, but from that error, three from home. Aldrich Jelenic, the next to go. So Christoph Kuntz of Switzerland, the downhill champion from Vancouver, is a non starter. Jelenic. 23rd in Vancouver. More of a uh, GS man, I think. Having recorded his best finishes in majors in the Giant Slalom. Jelenic. How close can he get to Solokolovic's time? It's not uh, not pretty, but it's effective because it's getting him down. And 6.98 off the pace. And 
Jelinic onto this steep final pitch. Does okay. This verticale section will get some speed into the mono ski. 52.74, off the pace and be nearly seven seconds slow at the interval. Kurt Oatway of Canada now in the LW12-1 class, his first major para-alpine tournament. Competition, skiing in all five of the disciplines in the LW12-1 class for uh, skiers with normal or only slightly decreased trunk function and leg impairments. Doing a good job on those top turns. And Sokolovic's first and only split time, 31.91. Oatway, not going to be too far off it. Four seconds or so, 3.59. Oh boy, he had a good run in the downhill. He was fifth in the sitting downhill competition on day one. And he's letting the ski run on this lower section. He's adding some speed to the turns and doing a good job. Oh, that's a good run. 4.87. That is one of the better final pitches we've seen in recent skiers. He only lost uh, just over a second to Sokolovic. Now, Taniguchi, the last of the Japanese skiers to go in this men's slalom race for the sitting category. His uh, best results have been in the technical disciplines, but a while ago, sixth from the slalom at the World Championships back in 2004, so over 10 years ago. And uh, a 40-year-old doing okay on these opening turns. Tanaguchi is 5 point. So oh, no, 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 no. 5.61 off the pace, but he comes to grief. And uh, well, his teammates wait at the bottom. And, uh, Hanaguchi will be the only one of the five that registers a DNF. So it's disappointing for Tanaguchi. Well, not the first person. Brusso of Canada came to grief on exactly the same little bump. Now, next up is Corey Peters of New Zealand. His first Winter Paralympic Games. Eighth in the World Cup standings, having come second and fourth in the two slalom races he has competed in on the World Cup Tour this year. He was second in the first Oh, that's a big, big hit he's taken there on that love. He's absolutely stopped him dead. So as I was saying, second in the first slalom in uh, Coronet Park in New Zealand back in August. Then he went to Threadbow in Australia in September and came fourth there. And uh, 4.6 seconds off the pace. Not bad considering he came to a grinding halt. Now... Can he get the direction and the rhythm right on this final pitch? Well, well, he did, and then had a big heavy edge check on his uh, right edge to take off all his speed. Oh, he's very late in the line. Well, fortunately, that gate was set up perfectly for him to get back into the racing line. 7.21 off the pace, goes 16th, 59.95. Uh, Now, Oscar Antonio Espaillargas Juarez of Spain. He's 
first race of these games, his first Winter Paralympic Games. Didn't finish the solemn race in La Molina. And that's Bayargas Juarez. It's very low. And uh, that red gate gets back up and uh, will stop the clock at the interval time check at 40.39. Just uh, shy of eight and a half seconds off the pace of Sokolovic. Sokolovic's time is going to be safe now. All these skiers coming down now are uh, decreasing in world ranking. Viergas Juarez, how's he going to enjoy this final pitch, these final turns? Here comes the last couple of turns and 13.91 off the pace. Rafael Suzmich of Poland, the next to ski, racing the technical disciplines. And Suzmich being in the LW102 class. This is skiers that have no or minimal trunk stability. And uh, sadly, for the Polish skier, he is down and out. And, uh, not a disappointment for them. But they have another skier. Well, Suzmich still going. Now he's uh, finally come to a stop in the wet snow to the side. Here, well, he started bouncing and well, just couldn't make the turn. Got caught in the thick, sugary snow at the side, and uh, off he went. And the reason he's gone such a long way is he was spending more time trying to just get his outrigger flipped up so he could get upright. And now he's off the racing line. That's the last gear to go. <laughs> Fimos <laughs> Kalaris, but this is Thomas Jakobsen of Norway. Won a bronze medal at the uh, Vancouver Winter Paralympics. But that was in ice sledge hockey. He's the former captain of the Norwegian ice sledge hockey team. And uh, he changed to alpine skiing after picking up a serious injury in ice sledge hockey and uh, opted to change sport so there is um, little chance of the same impact on him in the recurrence of the injury and actually left him paralyzed for some time but he gained the feeling and uh, opted to change sports it was a check body check and a match up against the cyborgs that caused it And uh, Jakobsen saw him in the Super G in the DNF. He's 10 seconds off the pace of Sokolovic at the time check. Now this bottom pitch, very steep. And he find the rhythm when he's taking the rounded line approach. And uh, doing just fine. Jakobsen inside of the finish, stops the clock, 17.87 off the uh, time check. Now, Ben Sneesby of Great Britain, next to go, the 19 year old in his first major games. Also swims and plays basketball. Now, how is he faring on these opening turns? First of two British skiers in the 60 category. This needs to be we're in okay now. He's got the rhythm going. He's getting some very low angles, but you can see he's getting a very wide line in order to take a safe route.
Sneesby coming inside of the finish. 52.74 and he's 8.8 seconds. 17th, good run. Now it is uh, Igor Sikorski of Poland. In his first Winter Paralympic Games, he's racing the technical distance. Oh, he's got bumped out and he's going to get very low in the line here. He's got to pull himself back across for the red gate, which he does just about. And that's going to cost him. Now. Sikorski. Pulled it, got his rigger caught on the gate, and uh, that is the end of him. Oh, I thought he might have missed the gate, but uh, Sikorsky still going. That might be reviewed. And uh, Sikorsky stops the clock 20 seconds off the pace, but I'm just wondering whether or not he uh, will be disqualified. Now, Mick Brennan of Great Britain. Off and going and uh, you know, just taking it cautiously on those opening turns. before skiing the wider line in order to make sure now he's got some rhythm going he's covering a lot more ground but he has to in order to try and find a smoother track 31.91 is Sokolovic's time and Brennan well 7.67 that's around 24 and there are what 33 skiers at the bottom of the piece now Brennan can he find some time on this bottom section we've seen it's been very difficult well he's oh no he's, he's taken the wrong gate he skied around the outside of the blue gate rather than the inside i think he's missed that blue gate mick brennan he's skiing such a wide line he got the wrong gate and he stops the clock 13 seconds off the pace but i think he's going to be disqualified i think he's gone around the outside of the blue gate rather than inside it now lee G1 of Korea, the next to ski. His first Winter Paralympic Games. GS, I think, is more his game. He was 13th in Lamalina. So, Lee Chi won. Waits his turn. As we look at uh, Garlic. Jakic of Slovenia. Seven skiers remain at the top of this slalom run in the sitting category. Just wait and see. Wait for Lee to be called forward. Pairs to the piece are done, are they? A little nod comes from the official to the side, and the timing wand is placed across the gate. It's not, I thought I saw a little nod, but obviously there's still somebody further up. Now they're just being asked to move and the wand is across and Lee Chi Won can get his uh, challenge underway. 
and uh, very tentative and, uh, those opening turns and uh, Lee making sure of them again skiing the rounded line technique oh, almost gets turned backwards but just gets back for that blue gate to keep his uh, challenge on track with uh, finding those steep top turns very difficult and Li Chi Wan now he'll let the monoski flow and he's nine seconds off the pace whoa he's absolutely motoring he's missed that red gate he was going way too quickly and he just didn't see the red gate and skis out of the first run disappointment for Lee the Park Yong Shorka career is set still there this is Nikolai Shuvalov of Russia in the LW102 class, his first Winter Paralympic Games, skiing with technical different disciplines. And Shuvalov, 84 years of age, the character of skiing in your home Winter Paralympics, a massive one, I'm sure. And he will be doing everything he can to get to the bottom and hear the cheers of the crowd in his ears. And give him a massive lift for the other technical disciplines. He'll want to be hearing that four times, which is what he will do if he finishes both slalom and giant slalom. Of course, two runs in both of those categories, or disciplines, should I say. Shivalov is 14 and a half seconds nearly. Oh, dear, 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 dear. what's happened there? What side of that red gate? He's too low. He's got to get above that red gate. He's got to come back up. But look how he's sinking into that soft snow. Shivalov. Oh, he's just about there. Yeah, he is there now. Gets the right side of that red gate. That red gate married with the one to the left. And the crowd. Well, they're going to be cheering for a while. They're revving up to bring the Russian athlete home. Good scheme by Shuvalov to try and get to the bottom and he will finish 133.51 40 seconds off the pace they enjoyed that at the bottom so Ulrich Nivol of Denmark is a non-starter so this is Johan Tor Holmgrimsson of Iceland the first Icelandic skier to compete at the Winter Paralympics, first male one. And Holmgrimsson, like he's all these lower ranked skiers. Rounded turns once again. And Hongkinson will be over 10 seconds off the pace of Sokolovic. And then be 20. And he's going to be nearly 20 seconds. 19.71. Hongkinson sets himself up for this final pitch and we will encounter bigger ruts on this bottom part now he's missed the blue gate isn't he yes he has he missed the blue gate inside of the finish and disappointment for the Icelandic supporters but they still wave their flags high the DNF sadly Johan Tor Holmgrenson of Iceland. 
Karl Jakic of Slovenia. The only Slovenian to compete in the Winter Paralympics of 2010 where he was 29th in the slalom. It was he too having difficulty on these top turns. He was the flag bearer. The opening ceremony here in Sochi. A number of flag bearers in Alpine, but not really a surprise considering there's uh, over 200 skiers registered for the Alpine discipline of uh, just under 600 in total in these Winter Paralympic Games. And Jakic just got the line all wrong. And he's bounced out into the A netting. He's got his outrigger caught there. And Jakic will be a DNF, sadly, for him. Got caught low in the line. And uh, just heading off in the wrong direction. So he'll need to be untangled from the A netting. Course crew, one of the course crew makes it there. Simple job for him because he's higher up the hill. And Jakic uh, will have to make his way to the side of the piece as the gate is repaired. And there are just two skiers remaining at the top. Xavier Fernandez of Andorra and that man there, Efimi Dimios Calares of Greece. So Jakic out the way and Fernandez of Andorra in the LW10-1 class can go. The Another flag bearer. GS more his discipline. Whoa, 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 whoa. Very, very wide in the line. Oh, dear, 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 dear. Right, really lost control there to Fernandez. And has a heavy fall. Oh, let's hope he's okay. And just bruise pride than anything else, hopefully. And uh, he's probably deciding that uh, sliding down is a lot easier than, than skiing down. But look how wet and slushy that snow is at the side. And uh, Fernandez. Once you hit those gates, you're in real trouble. Fortunately, it was with the ski rather than uh, his body to start with. But then uh, the gates got their own back. And uh, Fernandez registers a DNF. And there is one left to come. Ephemios Calares of Greece. The only Greek athletes here they won a silver medal at the summer paralympic games in discus in athens in 2004 and Kalaris is ready to go the lw 10 one class as well similar to that of fernandez just before him skiers that have no or minimal trunk stability for example due to spina bifida or spinal cord injuries and they rely therefore mainly on their arms to move the sit ski and Calaris just picking his way down these top turns it is so steep the hammer angles don't do it justice or how quite how hard it is oh no 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 and Calaris skis out can't make the left turn for the red gates and so that is the end of the first run for the Sitski category and it's been dominated by Dino Sokolovic who skied a absolutely blistering first run who leads by 1.61 seconds you can see here he's trying to get across for that red gate he's nowhere near it in fact and realizes that uh, he's got to make a turn shortly otherwise he's going to be going at some pace down this piece so no joy for Calaris of Greece he'll be back for the GS and uh, those that have waited for all the skiers can now go and have a break before the second run commences but let's have a look at the standings at the halfway point of the men's slalom for the sitting category and Dino Sokolovic of Croatia leads the way from Takeshi Suzuki of Japan with the uh, world champion 
Philippe Bonademan and bronze medalist from Vancouver in third place. But look at the gap there, 1.85 between Sokolovic and Bonademan. It's a big, big gap and it may have to see a mistake from Sokolovic to get Bonademan into further up the medal standings. So at the moment we have 27 finishers from the uh, 41 that started, but I think a number of those times will be under review. I thought I saw a number of missed gates. Let's uh, remind ourselves of some of the action that we've seen here in this afternoon in run one of the men's slalom in all three categories of visually impaired standing and sitting. Well, some brilliant action from the first run of the men's slalom competition in visually impaired standing and sitting. It's Valery Redkozobov of Russia that leads the way in the visually impaired category. It is Alexei Bugayev of Russia who leads the way in the men's standing category. But it is Dino Sokolovic of Croatia that leads the way in the sitting. He came up with a brilliant first run and it's all set up nicely for run two. Thank you for your company for the opening run of this men's slalom competition. And I do hope you will join us again soon. Bye-bye.